A good set of tires is the best thing that you can do for the off-road capability of your vehicle. But even with an awesome set of tires, depending on the type of off-roading that you're doing, there's a good chance that you're gonna get stuck at some point. And if you get stuck, traction boards can be a nice solution, but their use is definitely limited. In certain situations, the only way that you're gonna get yourself out is with a winch. I found this out firsthand with my Tacoma. I've got a winch on that and it's come in handy several times. It's gotten me out of a lot of situations and it's also given me that confidence to go out out into the middle of nowhere by myself knowing that I can get myself unstuck if I need to and so when I got the FJ Cruiser I knew that this was going to be a must-have feature and as you can see I've now got a winch installed I went with the same setup that I've got on Tacoma a winch from rough country it's one of the best values on the market and a mount from hidden winch mount specialist the reason I decided to go that route is that I really wanted to maintain the stock look on the FJ I feel like the FJ is already a classic and as time passes it's continued to be even more of a classic and so it was really important to me to maintain this stock look while also adding that additional functionality of a winch you can see it's got a really nice clean finish here we've got our winch hidden back behind the bumper here we've got our fair lead cut into the front valence here um, and it pretty much looks like it's stock but obviously we've got that functionality of a winch so that's a look at the install with that let's get to the install instructions first i'll give you a quick look at the mount and the winch like i said the mount came from hidden winch mount specialist same company that i used for the tacoma and I believe they're the only option on the market for a hidden winch on the FJ Cruiser. Uh, for the Tacoma, I got it powder coated. It had a really nice clean finish to it. And then I tucked it away behind the bumper and under the uh, skid plate where you can't really see it. Weather doesn't really get to it. It seemed a little bit like overkill. So this time around, I sprayed it myself. Hopefully it's not a mistake. I uh, got a little bit of Rust-Oleum undercoating put a couple coats on and it looks pretty good. Uh, we'll see how it weathers over time. The nice thing is if it were to chip at all, it's easy to touch up by myself. And then for the winch, same winch that I used on the Tacoma, it's the Rough Country Pro Series 9500S, a really good value. The S stands for synthetic rope. You'll see synthetic rope there. That's a really nice option over a cable because if it were to break, it's a lot safer. And then I also picked up an additional strap to keep in the FJ. Links to both of these as well as the mount are in the description below. All right, so first off, we've got to remove the grill. We've got two 10 millimeter bolts up top that need to be removed. Got a plastic clip over on this side as well as on this side. And then we've got two little tabs, one right here and one right here. On these, we're just gonna take a little flathead screwdriver, pry it in and kind of push it that direction and then this will pull free. For these plastic screws on either side, we're just gonna take a small flathead screwdriver, gently pry it under the head of this little screw, pull up so that's free, and then the whole thing just lifts out. We've also got a plastic screw down here, as well as one on the other side, and one in the middle that need to pop out. We're just gonna take our small screwdriver here, gently pry it in here, twist this sideways to kind of pop that out. Do the same thing on the other side and in the middle, like that, and then it should pull free. There we go, got the grill off. We're gonna set this aside somewhere safe. All right, next we're ready to remove the bumper. First, we've got three more of these plastic screws that pry up, uh, one on this side, one here in the middle, and one over here on the passenger side. And then we've got a whole set of screws down on the bottom. On both the driver and passenger side, we've got these two screws that need to be removed. And then looking along the bottom here, we've got a couple more. You may also have an additional plastic cover right here that I'm missing and several more that need to be removed along that end. Uh, so go ahead and just remove all these screws all the way down to the passenger side. We've also got a couple more plastic clips that need to be removed, one right here and one right here. And then we are ready to gently pull this away from the vehicle. off. Now we're ready to remove the actual bumper. Um, on each side we've got four bolts, three over here, one there, and we've got the same thing over on the passenger side. Breaker bar is going to be handy here as these are on here quite tight. 
All right, we'll set all these aside. And we're ready to remove the bumper. And we can discard this. Nick's ready to install the winch mount on the FJ. It's recommended that you install the winch before you put it on the mount, but that's gonna make it a lot heavier to get on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the mount and then we'll put the winch on after the mount. So you'll see the cutouts here line up perfectly with all of those bolts on each packet. Just line them up, slide it on there. And then we're gonna reuse the same nuts to secure this to the vehicle now. So now that the winch mount's installed, we're ready to get the winch mounted. Um, the solenoid had to be removed when I did it on the Tacoma because there wasn't enough clearance for it. But in the FJ, there's actually enough space here that it can go in without being relocated. If you do want to relocate it to another spot that's more accessible, you could mount it up here somewhere behind the grill. But I think it's going to work just fine where it is on top of the winch. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up on top. There are four bolt holes on the bottom of the winch. We're going to line those up with the four holes we've got cut into the mount. And to secure the winch, it comes with the hardware that we need here. So we've got these little square nuts, uh, four spots up on top where these just slide into place. And then we've got a bolt, a locking washer, and a regular washer that we're gonna screw in from the bottom into this nut and get it nice and tight. Now that the winch is connected to the mount, we're ready to go ahead and wire things up. We've got two wires that need to be connected. One is our positive cable and the other one is the ground wire. The ground wire, it's probably a good idea to actually connect before you get it connected to the mount here. I forgot to do that ahead of time. Uh, you'll see looking down here on the bottom, we've got a nut down here. That's where the ground wire needs to connect. So just loosen that and then install the ground wire. And then I brought the ground wire through the compartment here, back behind the driver's side headlight. Got a cutout down here bring the wire up through here and then connect it to the ground up on this end. And then our positive wire, you'll see I've also got connected here and I've got some zip ties just connecting both wires at several points along the way to keep it nice and secure. So neither wire uh, can move around or make contact with anything else. So we've got a few connections through here. And then likewise, the positive wire goes through this cutout, got it coiled up on the inside here and then connected to the positive side of our battery terminal. Uh, once both of those are connected, you should be good to go. This is a good time to test it out and make sure that the winch is functioning properly before we put the bumper and the grill back on because then it's gonna be harder to get to it and troubleshoot should you have any issues. So to test out the winch, we've got our controller right here on the side of the solenoid. We've got this little rubber cover that comes off and then this cable will just connect onto the side of the solenoid here. Just push it on. And then on the controller, there's an outside and an inside. So if we push out, you'll see that it brings our cable out. And then likewise, if we pull in, so we are good to go, ready to get to the bumper and grill install. Well, as you can see, a lot's happened since the last clip, including the winch is in, the bumper's on, the fair lead hole here is cut out, and I've lost a lot of hair in the process. Uh, this step was definitely a bit challenging for several reasons. Um, where to start? Well, the first thing is that this stock bumper is definitely a little bit on the cheap side. There's a lot of cheap plastics that like to break on you. Uh, to get the whole bumper installed and lined up so you can figure out where to cut out the fair lead was a challenge. Uh, there are two brackets on either side of the bumper, uh, driver side and passenger side, that are very fragile if you're pulling the bumper on and off. And so it doesn't really give you that flexibility uh, for multiple attempts. And then likewise, cutting out this hole for the valence is definitely a tricky step as well. What they recommend in the instruction manual is that you get the bumper in position and then you basically mark the uh, cutout from the backside, doing that with the cut through holes here for the bolts and then tracing the fair lead. Um, I found that was a little difficult because in order to do that, I've got to get the bumper on uh, without breaking those plastic parts on the side. So rather than doing it that way, I measured out the holes for the bolts on the front here, drilled those through and then did the same thing, traced this out and then cut the valence. Um, so got it on there pretty well. It doesn't look perfect if you look too closely and then you'll see around the edge, I've got this little black strip. Uh, this is just a piece of uh, basically door protector. Give you a look at that. 
get this from an auto parts store, so a little edge trim here for the doors. Uh, it helps with the finish because cutting the plastic, it's hard to get a really nice clean look. And so putting that edge protector around there basically hides the uh, uneven cut. So uh, we got that on. As you can see, the Fairlead is also installed here now. Uh, we've got the bumper on entirely, basically just follow the same instructions that, um, that we used to get it off. And then the next step, this is actually a step that I missed early on. Uh, so I'll put a little hint at the beginning of the video so you guys can check that out. These little brackets, there's two of these, they come with the winch mount and they secure the bottom portion of the bumper. So if you guys recall, where the bumper attaches, there's three bolts on one side and then one bolt on the other side. Uh, this right here lines up with that bottom bolt. So that bottom bolt should go through here. And then this bottom piece here lines up with this cutout here in the bumper. And that way we've got a nice rigid connection at both ends of the bumper. Now that the uh, stock bumper has been removed where originally it would have had those brackets uh, holding on this plastic piece. So uh, go ahead and use the supplied uh, bracket and they also give you the hardware to connect this. And then uh, once we've done that, we will finish up by getting the grill installed. So putting the grill back on super easy, we're just gonna slide it into position. So we've got it there, we're just gonna push in. You'll hear a couple clicks. And then we've got the plastic clips on either side and those 10 millimeter bolts that go here in the middle. One last tip on the install, our horn is installed on this bolt right here, but you can see that with the horn in this location, it's gonna really restrict access down to our clutch that's below here. So I've relocated the horn over to this side. So uh, pull it off this uh, bolt here. And then this nut, if you take it off, there's a bolt sticking through, slid it on there, resecured that nut. And now we've got nice clear access on this end. I hope those install instructions were helpful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those in the section below. For more Toyota videos, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.